What is up you guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome to my channel and welcome back to another True Crime Sunday. Now, it's been a little while since I put up a True Crime Sunday and same excuse as always, I am on semester at uni. I've also been going through um, a really difficult time just with friendships and mental health and things like that. And so I haven't really had time to give my all to a true crime Sunday. Uh, but this is a case that I wanted to get out there because I don't know, it's just something that I saw while I was scrolling through Instagram and it was a post that someone shared where it said that this 16 year old boy, that this 16 year old boy was murdered for throwing a sandwich and I know that this isn't a True crime case where there is any sort of I guess mystery around it I mean there is mystery around why this particular facility was allowed to and is continuing I guess the company is continuing to operate this isn't a true crime case where it's like a whodunit. There are some questions that I have about this case. There's missing footage. There's a lot of stuff. It is going to be a little bit of a different one. It is going to be quite an upsetting case. It almost made me cry when I was researching. It made me feel really sick. So if you're not down for that right now, I would suggest clicking off until you feel a little bit stronger. Also, before I get into this case, I just wanna let you guys know that I'm going to be putting up a video and it's just going to be a really short video, basically asking for submissions on what cases you want me to cover, just so that all of your comments and all of the different cases are gonna be in the one place and I'm gonna reference this video that is gonna be right here in every true crime case that I do, just so that you guys have a place to submit the cases that you want me to cover. Um, and yes, so that will be right here and it will also be in the description box below. So if you've got any cases you want me to cover, Click on the video, put it in the comments. So this is the case of Cornelius Fredericks. Cornelius was also known as Corn um, to the people who loved him. His early childhood is seriously heartbreaking and that's how he ended up in the situation that he was in. So mother died in her sleep of heart failure and he was the one to find her uh, deceased. And then at 12 years old, he was separated from his siblings and put into his first youth home. So Cornelius lived in a couple of youth homes before he was put into a place called Lakeside Academy. Cornelius was only 16 years old and the people who knew him from the youth home that he was in before Lakeside describe him as being a sour patch kid and that basically meant that he had you know because he was a larger set boy he had a um, rough looking exterior but he had like a very soft gentle heart he has been described as a boy who really just wanted to be liked and there was a couple of occasions where he would do things for other kids so that he would be liked that would get him in trouble. Like um, sneaking away a cell phone to give to the other boys so that they could go on social media and just doing things so that the boys would like him. He was known for loving to show off his card tricks and playing chess with the youth workers. Now before I get into what happened to Cornelius, I do want to preface this video with some background information on Lakeside Academy and their mother company sequel. Now when I first looked up Lakeside Academy, I wasn't exactly sure on what it was because it wasn't very clear um, and when you go onto their website, they've got like a picture of kids in a uniform and it looks like they've got their own um, sporting team which is called the Titans and obviously now the website is it's not completely closed but the links aren't clickable the um, actual facility has closed down recently I'm pretty sure because of this so everything on the website is just the front page saying that they're closed down um, but you know they still support the community and all this kind of stuff, basically saying how good they are, how compassionate they are. And um, at the top, there's a thing for programs, the programs that they used to do, um, but you just can't click on any of the links. You can just see what was originally on their homepage. But you can see down the bottom that their parent company is a company called Sequel. And then when you look up Sequel, it tells you more about what Lakeside used to be and you can see that Sequel also operate like 40 places that are 
basically the same as Lakeside. So Sequel describe, or at least they claim, uh, to offer specialized care for children with mental and behavioral disorders. So this is a school, like it's a residential school. Equal say that they offer their residents um, treatment for teens from unstable homes who've been in foster care or the juvenile justice system, um, as well as specializing in autism and educational services. Uh, they claim to offer compassionate care to help them reach their fullest potential. So essentially, uh, from what I can gather here, Lakeside Academy um, was a school for struggling children, whether that be for they've been in the foster system or whether they've got um, autism or, you know, just children who need one-on-one -on -one, um, extra uh, special attention, basically. But what kind of compassion did Lakeside offer the children? So before what happened to Cornelius, happened um lakeside was actually already known well known for their improper behavior towards children and i want to make it clear that it is documented so in november last year they were investigated for improper restraints and inappropriate behavior management techniques um, resulting in a licensing violation from basically in america i'm assuming that if you want to run a place where you look after children you have to have a license obviously and there is one governing body and they are called the child welfare licensing division and i'm assuming that that's something similar to here in australia it's called docs or the department of child safety um in october the october that just passed the child Welf welfare licensing division also confirmed allegations that staff at lakeside had been cursing at pushing down and backhanding the children. So backhanding is like that. So that's another violation. Very concerned as to why the child welfare licensing division allowed them to keep their license after that, but that's only the, the tip of the iceberg. In January, so January of this year, another investigation occurred which reported a staff member was slapping, choking, and scratching a child. The staff member was suspended, but has also been in trouble months before for improper supervision of a student. So from what I'm gathering of that investigation, they were physically harming a child, including choking, which to me, it reads a lot like attempted murder, but you know, whatever. And then the next part that I'm getting from this is that not only had they been in trouble months before this incident, but they were only suspended. Suspended means that they can come back after a certain period of time. Like their employment hasn't been terminated. It's just been suspended after trying to choke a child and scratch and what else was it? And slapping a child. So in January, Cornelius um, was he, he was throwing a ball at a pier and then he got tackled by staff members to the ground and was held down. He was restrained. Now, in the documents that they've got of this incident, so after every incident occurs, usually at any sort of organization, even at the organizations where I work, you have to fill out an incident report, um, basically saying what happened, what time, what care was given, if any injuries were sustained. So on the report, the staff members say that they restrained Cornelius for 10 minutes um, and that there were no injuries sustained. But little did they know it was being recorded on a security camera after the main events, which we haven't even gotten into yet, they investigated this particular incident because it was in his file. It was, you know, similar to what had happened to when they had killed him. But when they looked at the surveillance footage for that day, they had held him to the ground for a period of 36 minutes. That is a huge difference between 10 minutes, which is still really um, over the top, but it was 36 minutes. So there's a huge difference to what the staff members reported happened and what the security um, camera picked up. On the security footage, you can see the incident where they're, they're restraining him for 36 minutes. And then when they leave him, he's left crying and he can hardly walk. So, so that happened in January. And then on the 29th of April, um, Cornelius was sitting in the cafeteria. And from the security footage of this day, he was 
um, tearing the crusts off his sandwich. So I want you to remember what Lakeside and what Sequel have on their website, that they provide specialized, compassionate care for children um, who have special needs. Basically what you can see from this footage is that Cornelius is sitting in a cafeteria. He is ripping off the crusts to his sandwich and then he tries to get the attention of the boys at the table in front of him and he throws the crusts at the boys. Immediately after he does this, one man comes from the back and then another man comes from the front. The man who comes from the front takes away Cornelius's tray of food and then the man who comes from the back gets in a really um really offensive um stance a really intimidating stance which is the opposite of de-escalation training that these youth workers should have he basically cocks up his knee so he stands over Cornelius like Cornelius is here this 16 year old boy and say I'm the youth worker He's standing over, like with his foot on the chair, standing over Cornelius like this. After uh, quite a long time, actually, like a, I, I really wish that there was audio to this um, recording, but obviously it's just the security footage. But they stood over him for a really, really long time. Cornelius was kind of just fiddling with his sandwich. And then after a while, he just tosses the sandwich at the front table to get the attention of the boys that he threw his crust at before. As soon as he does this, the man who had his knee cocked up literally throws Cornelius off his chair and pins him to the ground. Cornelius is a, a wide set boy, but the two men and the rest of the men that get involved in this are, they look like they weigh close to 100 kilos. Like they, are big people. He is literally thrown out of his chair, pinned to the ground. He's this massive table, cafeteria table that he's at is like pushed this way. Um, and he is pinned to the ground by a lot of men. At one point, there was a total of seven men that were sitting on him. For the most part, the kids seemed to disperse. Not all of them. They never closed off the cafeteria. They let the kids come in and out while they watched what's about to happen go down. Um, but for the most part, the kids that were surrounding Cornelius dispersed. They held him down for a period of 12 minutes. I have no idea why they held him down for that long because he wasn't really struggling all that much apart from when you see his leg twitching, um, which you will see why that happens. But um, it feels like a lifetime to watch. I watched the video on double speed because it, it literally was, they held him down for a really, really long time. And on top of that, I grew up in homeless shelters and if there was ever um, a time where, you know, a teenager boy was going off at one of the youth workers or doing something like, something more than throwing their cross. Usually what would happen if they needed to restrain someone is they, they would never restrain them like that, but they would just move them to another room, close the door and let them calm down. They would talk to them, give them some food, maybe their medication if they hadn't had it, but they would ne like never, never have I experienced growing up in homeless shelters and youth centers. Has this ever happened? I've seen way worse behavior from young men than throwing crust um, of bread. Now, this very much mirrors the case of George Floyd because during this period of time, Cornelius screams out, I can't breathe. His shoes come off because his feet start twitching um, and he suffocates. At some point during this sitting on him, these seven men sitting on him, his bladder and his bowels empty. The employees that were involved in this incident said that they thought he was just faking it, but some other employees said that they saw foam coming out of his mouth. They lift him up. Um, you can see them lifting him up, trying to sit him up, but they can tell that he is limp and then they literally drop him back to the ground. This is another thing that literally infuriates me because they, these people literally stand back and look over him for so long, like a, a really uncomfortable amount of time. They kind of just look down at him and just 
stand there and it's really uncomfortable to watch. There's one lady there and I know that there was a nurse present, but I'm, I don't want to just assume that it was the lady that was a nurse um, because that would be sexist, but you know, like, yeah, anyways, the point of the fact is, is that there was a nurse there. The nurse was present throughout the entirety of the ordeal, including this next bit. After a really long time of them standing there just looking at him, they start to do CPR, but it is quite possibly the most... That it's not CPR. It is the most frustrating CPR I've ever seen. They just do a really bad job at doing CPR. They're not consistent. One person does it for a couple of then and then another person tries it and another person tries it and they they're just really really inconsistent um and before i looked at what other people's opinions were on it i picked up on the fact that this cpr was there's absolutely no way that that cpr would bring anyone back to life they try to roll him over um it's just a very uncomfortable thing to watch you can just you can tell that none of these people are trained in any sort of first aid. Um, this is another thing that it, like shows what kind of facility this is. N at not one point during this whole ordeal, even when they realized that, hey, he's um, passed away, did they close off the cafeteria. There were students coming in and out and watching and being like, oh, what's going on and, and going out and whatever. Don't forget. Cornelius, at this point, his bladder and his bowels had already been released. There was foam at his mouth. Like, they they didn't ever close off the cafeteria. It, it's, it's just chaos. There are kids, there are staff everywhere just watching him. His shirt's up. Like, it's, it's, um, it's sad. I've seen a lot of Reddit comments, but there's a couple of common themes here. People basically from the medical in industry, whether they're nurses, whether they're psych nurses, whether they work in youth centers. A pretty consistent theme here is that they're saying that that's the worst CPR they've ever seen. That it's clear that the, the staff members have no CPR training or de-escalation training. And then there's a comment from Cornelius's previous youth home from one of the youth workers who worked with Cornelius. Um, and they say that they understand that youth can test employees' patients, but these workers are supposed to use trauma-informed techniques to calm these children down. Um, and to be honest, all he did was throw his bread crust. So basically understanding that these children have been through trauma, like finding your mother dead in her sleep, like Cornelius did, being separated from your family and put into a youth home and not being treated well at this youth home, Understanding that this child has been through trauma and if they do misbehave, they need to be met with compassion and proper techniques. But again, all he did was throw crust at the boys in front of him. He just threw crust. A lot of these comments, um, the next ones are from people who work in prisons and like psych wards. Um, and even they're shocked that this kind of treatment was used in a school. Three of the people involved in Cornelius's death were charged with manslaughter and second degree child abuse, but that's only three of the seven. What I find really interesting is that there is an amount of footage that's clearly missing from the tape. So we assume that he was sat on and restrained for 12 minutes, but there is a period where they're sitting on him um, and then one second goes by and the frame changes and people who were sitting on him before are suddenly out of the frame. So I really don't know if it was just 12 minutes where they were sitting on him because in the January incident where they did the same thing to him, they reported in their incident report that they restrained him for 10 minutes, but the security footage showed that they restrained him for 36 minutes. So now in this new incident where he's now deceased, it we see 12 minutes of them sitting on him. The forensic examiner said that he can't tell why there is footage missing, if there is footage missing, or why the frame skips and suddenly people are in different places. But what we do know is, is that after Cornelius's murder, 
30 boys ran away from Lakeside. Now, remember that this is a school for um, children who need special education. It's not a prison. It's not a juvenile um, delinquent facility. It is a school. So they can't, you know, physically bring them back. These boys ran away after Cornelius's murder. Nine days before Cornelius was murdered, a little boy ran away from Lakeside and when police found him, he begged them not to take him back to Lakeside because he was afraid for his life. That was nine days before Cornelius died. One worker for Lakeside said that the only qualifications that you need to work there is you need to be able to breathe and you need to accept $13 an hour. There were extensive investigations done into Lakeside after Cornelius died. But before I bring those investigations up, I do want to remind you guys of the investigations that were happening before Cornelius died and nothing was done. But basically, after Cornelius died in the investigation, they found a whole bunch, but these are the things that I find more, the most pressing that I want to mention. In the two and a half years before Cornelius was murdered, Lakeside had 56 violations ranging from not checking if staff were on the registry of child abusers, um, botched paperwork, improper restraints and physical abuse against children. There were 237 instances in the last 18 months before Cornelius died where 911 was called to Lakeside. Nine days before Cornelius died, as we know, the little boy ran away and said, please don't take me back because he's scared for his life. It was found that Lakeside's parent company, sequel, is making $200 million in revenue and have similar instances of broken bones, loss of consciousness, and other injuries due to improper restraints at their facilities, and specifically one in Iowa. During the investigation, both the incident resulting in his death and the January incident basically noted that the investigators were shocked at the differences between the paperwork, so the incident reports, um, and the security footage showing the incidences. So basically the um, discrepancies between what the staff members said that happened and between what the security footage actually showed what happened. In investigating other abuse, at not just Lakeside, but some of the other 40 facilities that SQL operate, there were instances of kids being punched, pushed down, slapped, choked, restrained, cursed at. And not just that, it says here that officials from at least three states, so officials, like not just random people, officials of at least three states, um, had raised alarms about the restraints being used at Lakeside. That's just Lakeside. One state senator visited Lakeside and told the CEO that if Lakeside continues to treat the kids like this, a child is going to die. That comes from a state senator. A state senator said that to the CEO, that if you continue to treat these children like this, a child is going to die. I'm shocked that this all happened before Cornelius died and nothing, nothing stopped them from operating. Not even a state senator or three state officials or any of these investigations that happened prior to Cornelius' death. At Lakeside alone, um, they were making up to $427 per child per day for the children that were brought over from Oregon. So SQL continues to operate 40 facilities. Also, the rest of the staff that were involved in Cornelius's death have not been charged and aren't being charged. SQL haven't really given much to the press or anything like that. They shut down Lakeside, but they continue to operate around 40 different facilities that have similar incidences like this. Um, and basically their statement said that that their staff members at Lakeside have been trained in de-escalation techniques um, and said that restraint is not an appropriate first response and that the staff members being charged in Cornelius' death don't represent sequels like standards or their whatever, what have you. So basically, basically, I, I hope you're angry because I'm angry and SQL are still operating and the other people who are involved in Cornelius's death 
have not been charged. This is a little boy who just wanted to be liked. He just wanted attention from the other boys. This is a little boy who was put into this circumstance because his mother passed away in her sleep. Just this whole thing is scary because it's just a really scary picture painted of the place that this little boy was living at. Um, and yeah, it's, it's horrific. So I'm sorry that there's no conspiracy theory here for you guys, but this case is, is heartbreaking and just as worthy of your attention as any other true crime case. I don't know if any other true crime person on YouTube has brought this to you, your attention, but this is true crime. This happened literally months ago. They continue to operate. This little boy died for throwing crusts in the most, in the most, um, I can't imagine how scared those children must have been to know that these people, first of all, that the staff members are abusive. Second of all, to see them doing something to one of your peers that is clearly wrong. And third of all, feeling like you've got no power to do anything in case that happens to you because there is a pretty clear picture of how Lakeside treated these children. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like these videos, give it a thumbs up because it really does help. And please click on the video below. It'll be on the end screen as well to give me suggestions on what cases to cover next. It really does make it a lot easier while I'm on semester to already have you guys tell me what cases you are boggled, mind boggled by or heartbroken by or cases that you don't think are getting enough attention um, because then I don't have to search for them. It gives me inspiration to work on them while I'm working on assignments and studying for exams and it makes the process a lot easier for me as well. So please go and give me your suggestions in the video down below and yes. I will see you in the next one. Anyways, you guys, um, if you like my vibe, click subscribe. I'd love to have you part of my family, on my team. And on my final word, keep Cornelius in your heart. Don't forget, don't forget his face. Just because a child is a child doesn't mean that they should surrender their rights um, as a human being because they have all the same emotions as an adult. Um, they just don't understand them.